All right, what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to practice converting repeating decimals into their fraction equivalents. Let's take a look at this first example. We have 0 point repeating 4 or 5. That just means that we have a value that is 0 0.4545 4, 5, 4, 5, and that pattern continues to repeat over and over again. Now, all repeating decimals represent some fractional value. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this repeating decimal and express it as its fractional equivalent. Now, if we take a look at these three given examples, notice that all of the digits are underneath this line. That means everything underneath that line is repeating. Sometimes you might have a value where there is some numbers that are not under the line and some numbers that are under the line. But notice everything with these three examples is located under this line right here. Now, if you see examples like that, here's what you do. You count how many digits you have repeating underneath this line, and we have two of them. And what you're going to do is you're going to write a fraction bar. And because we have two numbers that are repeating underneath this line, we will write that many nines for our denominator. So we're going to write a 99. Now, for this one right here, we have one digit that is repeating. So what we're going to do is write a single 9. And for this pattern right here, we have one, two, three digits underneath the line. So we're going to write three nines. All right. What we do next is we take what is written under the line, in this case, a four and a five, and write that as our numerator. This example right here has a one underneath the line. So we just write a one and we take 711 or 711 and write that as our numerator for this example. All right, now what you do is you take each one of these fractions and just express them in lowest terms. Now, 1 ninth is already in lowest terms, so we can say that 0 point repeating 1 is equivalent to 1 ninth. All right, now 45 over 99 can be reduced by a factor of 9. If we divide 45 by 9, that is going to give us 5. And if we divide 99 by 9, that would give us 11. So we would say that 5 divided by 11 would result in the repeating decimal point repeating 4, 5. All right, now the fraction 711 over 999 is divisible by a factor of 9. So if we divide this numerator by 9, we would come up with 79. And if we divide 999 by a factor of 9, that would give us 111. So 79 over 111 is equivalent to 0 point repeating 711. All right, now let's do an example where we have some digits that are not underneath this bar and some digits that are underneath the bar. All right, now this example here has a digit that is not underneath our repeating bar here, and we have a digit that is underneath a repeating bar. All that means is we have a combination of fractions that will result in 0.8 repeating 1. Now let's take a look at an example that would produce something like this. Let's say, for example, you had the fraction 1 third, which we know for sure results in a repeating decimal. That would be 0 point repeating 3 over and over and over and over, okay? And then take something like 1 fourth, which we know will result in something that is not a repeating decimal. That would be 0 0.25. Let's say we took these two values and added them together. Well, let's take this 5 here and add it to the 3, which is an 8. And let's take this 2 here and add it to the 3, which is a 5. But after this 0.25, we have this 3 going on forever and ever and ever. So we would just start by saying we have 0.58 and then the 3 continues to repeat. So if we were to add 1 third to 1 fourth as fractions, and let's work out the math really quick. So we have 1 third plus 1 fourth, and then we have to make sure our denominators are the same. So we're going to change this 3 and this 4 into a 12. And 1 third is equivalent to 4 twelfths, and 1 fourth is equivalent to 3 twelfths. That would give us a total of 7 twelfths. So the fraction 7 twelfths 
would result in 0.58 repeating 3. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what two fractions do we add together that results in a fraction that would give us 0 0.8 repeating 1. Okay, the first thing that we do with a value like this is we write everything up until the repeating portion of that value. So let's just write 0 0.8. Now the next thing that we do right underneath is we write whatever our repeating value is, but starting right where this value is. So we're going to write 0 0.1. All right. Now we know that it would repeat forever and ever, but if we just have one digit that is not repeating, then what we're going to do is take whatever is repeating and only do one of those because we have one digit that is not repeating and we write it directly underneath here. Now here's what happens. If we subtract this together, we would get 0 0.7. Now let's think about that for a second. If we took 0 0.7 and then we added to that, 0 point repeating 1 over and over and over, that would give us 0 point 0.8, and then of course repeating 1, which can be expressed as 0 point 0.8 with a line over the 1. So now we separated this into two decimal equivalents. One of those decimals is 0 0.7 and the other one is 0 point repeating 1. Now what we have to do is take both of these decimal values and express them as their fractional equivalents. Now 0 0.7 is not repeating, so we just go ahead and express that as its decimal equivalent. And because 7 is in the tenths place, we just write that as 7 tenths. Okay, now let's take a look at 0 point repeating 1. Now 0 point repeating 1 can be expressed as 0 point one with a line over it. And remember, what you do is you count how many digits are located underneath this line, and that's how many nines you are going to write. So we just write a single nine. And then we take the digit that is underneath the line, and we write that as our numerator. So we would say that one ninth is equivalent to zero point repeating one, and we would say that seven tenths is equal to zero point seven. Okay, now what we have to do is add these two fractions together. And then we can see what fractional value represents 0 0.8 repeating 1. So first, what we have to do to add these fractions together is write a common denominator. And the lowest common denominator of 10 and 9 is 90. So we have to convert both of those into 90. Now we know that 10 fits into 99 times, so we multiply the 7 by 9, which would give us 63. And of course, 9 got 10 times bigger, so we make this one 10 times bigger, so we have 10 over 90. Now we just add these numerators together, which results in 73, and the denominator is a 90. And 73 over 90 is a fraction that cannot be reduced, so this is our answer. 73 over 90 is equivalent to 0 0.8 repeating 1. So if we were to take 73, and divide that by 90, the answer that we would end up getting would be 0.8, and then we would get a 1 that would be repeating over and over and over again. Okay, let's take a look at this value right here. All right, what we do first is we write everything up until the repeating portion of our value. So we go ahead and write 0 0.57. So we have two digits that are not repeating. So what we do is we subtract from it the repeating portion, and we write that repeating portion two times because we have two digits that are not repeating. So we subtract from 0 0.57, 0 0.33. All right. Now when we subtract these two values together, we get 0 0.24. Now what that means is if we were to add repeating 3, to 0 0.24, that would result in a total of 0.57. Now, many of you already know that whenever you have point repeating 3, that just represents the fractional value of 1 third. Now, remember, what you do when you try to convert a repeating decimal into a fraction is 
you see how many numbers are repeating. And we only have one digit repeating there, which is just a three. And that's how many nines you write for your denominator. And then you just take the number that is repeating, which is a three, and write that as your numerator. And three nines can be reduced to, of course, one third. So we already know that 0.33 is one third. Now we just have to express 24 hundredths as its fractional equivalent. Now, 24 is in the hundredths place, so we start by just writing 24 over 100, and then we just simplify this value right here. Now, 24 over 100 is divisible by 4. If we divide 24 by 4, that gives us 6, and if we divide 100 by 4, that gives us 25. All right, so we know now that we can combine 1 third with 6 25ths. And that's going to be equivalent to what this value is right here. So let's see what fraction 1 3rd plus 6 25ths would result from. So we start by writing the lowest common denominator of 3 and 25, which is 75. All right, and the numerator that we write over 75 would be 25 because 25 out of 75 is equivalent to 1 3rd. And because this 25 fits into 75 three times, we just multiply this top number by 3, which is 18. Now we add 25 and 18, which would result in 43. And remember, the denominator does not change when you add fractions. So 43 over 75 is the fractional value that is equivalent to 0 0.57 repeating 3. All right, let's do a couple of more examples. Now, sometimes you may get a value where the part of your value that is not repeating is smaller than the values that are repeating, and that can be a little bit tricky. So let's go ahead and figure out what we have to do here. So what we do is we start by writing the part that is not repeating, which is 0 0.2. Now, the part that is repeating is this 8 right here. So what we do is underneath this 0 0.2, like we did with the other examples, is we just subtract from it the part that is repeating. Now notice right here we have 0 0.2 and we're subtracting from it 0 0.8. So that means we're subtracting something bigger from something smaller, and that is going to result in a negative number. So if we subtract this from that, that would give us negative 0 0.8. 6. So what we would say here is negative 0 0.6 added to 0 0.8 would result in 0 0.2. So now we know the two decimal values that would be comprised to make this value right here. So what we have to do now is we have to convert these into their fractional equivalents. But remember, this is 0 0.8 here is actually repeating. We cannot forget that. So I really should have put this over here. Now, 0 0.6 is equivalent to 6 tenths, but we have to remember that it is negative. So we can express this as negative 6 tenths, and then we reduce that to negative 3 fifths. And we're going to add that to whatever fractional value is equivalent to 0 0.8 repeating 8. Now, we have one digit that is being repeated here, and that's how many 9s you write as your denominator. And then we take the number that is underneath this symbol here and write that as our numerator. So now what we have to do is we have to add negative 3 fifths to positive 8 ninths. So let's go ahead and write the lowest common denominator of 5 and 9, which is 45. All right, now 5 goes into 45 9 times, so we have to increase this numerator by a factor of 9. And of course, we increase this 9 by a factor of 5, so this 8 increases by a factor of 5. So 3 times 9 is 27, and 8 times 5 is 40. But we cannot forget that this value is negative. So negative 3 fifths is equivalent to negative 27 40 fifths. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to treat this 
kind of backwards. We're going to look at this as 40 over 45 minus 27 over 45, which is the same thing as adding negative 27 40 fifths to positive 40 40 fifths. So if we take 40 and subtract from it 27, that would give us 13. And our denominator is 45. So we would say that 13 over 45 is equivalent to 0 0.2 repeating 8. All right, let's convert this decimal value into its fractional equivalent. All right, so once again, what we do is we start by writing everything that is not underneath this repeating bar here. So we start with 0 0.25. All right, so we wrote two digits that are not repeating. So what we do is we take what is repeating, which is the 6, and we write two of those underneath the 0.25. So we write 0 0.66. And by subtracting the repeating part from the part that is not repeating, we figure out what two things or what two decimal values are being added to comprise this. So let's go ahead and subtract these together. Now, if you're subtracting something larger from something smaller, what you can do is you can just flip those around and subtract, but understand that your answer is going to be negative. So if we take 6 minus 5, that's 1, and 6 minus 2 is 4. So that gives us negative 0 0.41. So what we're saying here is that negative 0 0.41 is being added to 0 0.66 or 0 point repeating 6. So now that we know what the two decimal values are, we just have to convert those into their fractional equivalents. So let's start with negative 0 0.41. That would be expressed as negative 41 hundredths, and we have a repeating 6 here. And many of you may have memorized that repeating 6 is 2 thirds. But remember, if you're not sure what that is, you just take what's underneath the bar, write that as your numerator. And because we have one digit that is being repeated, that's how many nines you write as your denominator. So in this case, we write a single 9. And 6 nines can be reduced to 2 thirds. So what we have to do now is we have to add negative 41 one hundredths to positive two thirds. So the lowest common denominator of 103 is 300. So we change 100 to 300 and we change 3 to 300. All right, now this became three times bigger. So we multiply 41 by three, which is 123. And we have to remember that this value is negative. So that's negative 123 over 300. And of course, 200 out of 300 is equivalent to 2 thirds. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take 200 and subtract from it 123, which results in 77. And the denominator is 300. All right, now 77 and 300 share no common factors except for one, so this is already in simplest form. So we would say that 77 over 300 is equivalent to 0 0.25 repeating 6. Hey, I just want to say thanks very much for checking out my math video. Please subscribe to my channel so when I upload new math videos, you can become informed as they become available.